Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this week in Zidicon video, we're going to be tackling Ryzen and the RX 580 in Crossfire. That's right, some leaked benchmarks have once again appeared onto the internet, assuming they're genuine, but we'll get into that in just a moment. The first thing we're going to focus on, however, is the Ryzen series. This includes single thread performance, overclocking of the 1700, and a few other bits and bobs beside that. It's quite cool. So join me, my friends, and also thank you to the deluge of folks who have messaged me on Facebook. I'm clicking through now because I just want to say thank you to a couple of folks, but there are so many. Eugene, Henrik, Curtis, Rob, Christopher, ne Nilo, uh, Luca, Andre, Richard, Paul, who, yes, apparently my namesake, Ryan, Moses, Dominique, uh, Michael, and also I'm probably going to pronounce this chap's name incorrectly. Uh, Nectarius uh, and also Kosair. So thank you to all of those folks who have messaged me over the past couple of days, even if I've not responded yet. And there are loads of others on other social media as well, so thank you to everyone. Anyway, let's start with the news. One of them, one of the big pieces of news, at least in my opinion, allays fears concerning the 1700. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar, this chip has a low TDP rating of just 65 watts. So naturally that leads to, leads, excuse me, to some concerns regarding clock speeds and what you should be able to achieve. However, those fears appear to be unfounded, despite the fact that there is a massive price differential between it and let's say the 1800X. Gibbo, who is a staff member on Overclockers UK, which is a pretty famous retailer here in sunny old England, has managed to achieve a clock speed of 4.05 gigahertz on a Ryzen 7, 7 Ryzen 7 1700, excuse me, on an Asus Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard. Couple of things. One, of course, this is not exactly the biggest sample size in the universe. And two, it is quite an expensive motherboard. According to him, he said, we tested a 1700, it hit 4 gigahertz stable and everything, but only in the Crosshair main board. The lower end boards were hovering around 3.8 as the VRMs were cooking with extra voltage. It however was maxing out around 4050 megahertz so I'd say the 1700 could do 3.9 to 4.1 gigahertz. Of course 1800X will probably top out around 4.3 as no doubt better binned but if you're clocking the main board has a big impact on the overclock as far as Asus, Crosshair and Azrock Teishi seem the best too. So in other words he's giving you some advice there as well which is pretty cool. The only slight caveat is that motherboard is quite expensive. Um, both boards, and I'm just using their prices, are around the 250 to 220 dot pounds. So it's like if you're combining that with a processor which costs like uh, 320, I believe, for the Ryzen 7 1700, there is a bit of a price discrepancy. So it's up to you. Basically, it looks like the lower end boards, they just can't handle the voltages. But, once again, this is quite a low sample size that we have to work with here. So, you know, that's down to you whether you want to take that risk. Personally, I think the processor is still a pretty damn good value. And it is nice to know that it does have some room in it, despite the low TDP rating. Now, this is kind of cool. On, and a couple of you messaged me about this one. So, a website by the name of userbenchmark.com has a couple of results for the Ryzen 7 1700X. There are a couple of caveats to this, as there tends to be. The first caveat is turbo is disabled. The second is that it is not exactly, you know, a great suite of benchmarks, to say the least. But it does give you some indication. So, on screen right now, you can see I'm comparing it against a couple of different processors. And we're just going to do a few... Um, for example, the 6800K, uh, you can see average bench score and peak overclock. So it's not amazing. It does give you some single thread performance uh, information, which is quite nice. Uh, let's compare it against another CPU. Let's say the 6700K. Why not, right? Seems like a good idea to me. Uh, you're looking at single, it's faster, of course, single thread performance, apparently, than this particular processor. So this is, you know, something you're going to have to bear in mind. But if you start going down, uh, we can start looking at, let's say, oh, I don't know, an i5-7500. You can definitely see that there is quite a disparity between the processors. Now, the reason I bring this up is obviously with Turbo Disabled, essentially this processor is running at a bit of a disadvantage, to say the least. So 
when you start bearing that in mind, IPC results of this processor are actually very favorable. Now, another thing I would like to point you out to is the RX 580. To say we don't know much about how the 580 and Vega come to mind, well, is an understatement. And there are a couple of different theories. Just to put it into perspective, the first theory is the 580 and all of the 500 series are basically going to be Vega derivatives. In other words, Vega 11. So essentially the 560, the 570, the 580 will be Vega. Another theory is that the 570, 580 or other versions will be Vega 11. Other theories show that for the 560, 570, 580 will be totally rebrands of the Polaris, maybe with slightly improved architectures for higher clock speed, but the 590 um, and maybe the 590X will be Vega 11, and then the Furies basically will be the Vega 10s. That's another theory I've heard. Regardless, we've already seen a couple of benchmarks just a while ago, actually, with the 560 and the 580, but someone has messaged me another image which is doing the rounds on the internet at the moment, which is dual 580s running in Crossfire with what we can presume to be a a, bait, um, sorry, a Ryzen 5 CPU and it's running at the crazy level which is scoring 8100. Unfortunately I can't um, verify the validity of this because Ash of the Singularity benchmarks are notoriously not super difficult to fake uh, even online so it's like you know it's up to you whether you want to believe it however there are a couple of these 500 series benchmarks which have popped up over the past few days which does lend some credence to it. The performance, however, is pretty damn impressive, especially given that they are running these in 4K resolution. My personal opinion about Vega is we just don't know enough about the actual way that the, um, I, I guess you could say the SKUs fall into line. We know a lot about the actual hardware, so, for example, we know that it's, in terms of the actual architecture, it's drastically improved over Polaris. We know it has much better um, clock speeds. We know that it's much more efficient. We know it's even better for compute. Um, you know, we've discussed this stuff at length before in full analysis, so that's why I'm kind of glossing over it in this video. But what we don't know is, like, you know, the pricing. We don't know the release date exactly. We know it's going to probably be second quarter of this year. That's 2017. And we also don't know uh, things such as, like, you know, how many cards are going to be rebrands, what type of uh, performance bump we're actually going to see in real world. Because even the, uh, even the demos we've seen of, like, Doom, for example, because they've been using very, very early drivers, it's like it's not really indicative of final silicon. And even if the drivers were finalized, the silicon itself is so early in development from what you know the murmurs are, they haven't even kind of internally figured out, at least what the conversations I've had and the leaks and stuff like that with AMD, it's like they've not even figured out yet exactly how many parts they can get out or what the configuration of those parts is going to be. And that's probably something that's going to be settling in over the next couple of months. Regardless, for the 580, it looks like they're at least testing engineering samples, which is what I'm assuming these to be. Um, but obviously, that is if it is uh, not, well, you know, fake. But hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.